Now it's time for Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with biochemist Fezel Rana. Thank you for joining us. Sandra. We're going to be talking about scientific perspectives on theistic evolution. So first, I'd like to define our terms. Um, let's talk about theistic evolution. Now, as a theory, um, some Christians will view that as, um, as evolution challenges the Christian perspective. And then mm -hmm. some will say that that was a mechanism that God used mm -hmm. to, um, to create. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanna talk about that, but before we dive into that, let's talk about the different types of evolution because I think the common understanding is that evolution is evolution and there aren't different types. Yeah, well, and I find it helpful when mm -hmm. you think about this question of how should I think about evolution mm -hmm. from a Christian perspective is to recognize that evolution can be categorized into different types of evolution, mm -hmm. really with respect to the scale of the mm -hmm. transformation being mm -hmm. described. So microevolution would be a variation that takes place within a species. Mm -hmm. So the, the peppered moth changing its wing color mm -hmm. is an example of microevolution. Uh, another example would be speciation, where one species can give rise to a closely related sister species. Mm -hmm. So the Galapagos finches is an example of, of speciation. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, that same mechanism that generates speciation could even in principle account for the origin of of different genera, families. Uh, then there's, of course, microbial evolution. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all, we've been through the COVID-19 pandemic, so mm -hmm. we're aware of the fact that microorganisms will evolve, viruses, bacteria, other single-celled organisms. Uh, then there's other forms of evolution. Macroevolution, as mm -hmm. we might call it, refers to the evolution of one major group from another major group, and mm -hmm. this typically involves the generation of biological novelty mm -hmm. in organisms. And then last but not least would be chemical evolution or sometimes called the origin of life question mm -hmm. where uh, chemicals would have e evolved and self-organized into the very first cells, um, usually, usually conceived of in, in Darwinian terms. Mm -hmm. So when we think about these different categories of evolution, it helps us to make sense of which categories are compatible mm -hmm. with the Christian faith, regardless of your view of, of whether or not God used evolution to create, yeah. you know, and in which categories uh, potentially challenge the creator's role or the creator's involvement. Right, and I think it's very helpful because um, I've been asked the question before, and I'm sure you have, do you believe in evolution? And the expectation is you say yes or no, but it isn't really that simple if we're thinking about different types of evolution, right? right? Yeah. So which ones would you say would um, fit well within your Christian perspective and which ones yeah. do you think you need to kind of unpack a little bit more? Yeah. I, I, as an old earth creationist, mm -hmm. uh, don't outright reject the evolutionary mm -hmm. paradigm, but I don't accept it in its entirety. Mm -hmm. So for me, the idea of Microevolution, speciation, microbial evolution are non-controversial. They're mm -hmm. scientifically well established. When it comes to macroevolution and chemical evolution, here we are ascribing tr genuine creative potential mm -hmm. to the evolutionary process. And for some people, they would argue, well, if evolution can explain the origin of life and the origin of life's major groups, then what role is there for a creator to play? Mm -hmm. And so I, I see those forms of evolution as being uh, really a challenge to the idea of a creator's role mm -hmm. in the origin and the history of life. And those are um, chemical and macro evolution. That's right, correct? yes. So what would be examples of chemical evolution and then right. what would be the example of macro evolution? Well, you know, uh, macro evolution would be something like uh, whales evolving from uh, a wolf-like creature mm -hmm. uh, called Pachycetus or uh, that um, or um, uh, you know dinosaurs or sorry check that birds evolving from dinosaurs, mm -hmm. um, you know uh, chemical evolution would in essentially involve the the transformation of chemicals on the early Earth in the prebiotic soup uh, into the very first cells through mm -hmm. a process of aggregation and complexification. So that's non-life to life. Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, and so those are the ones that you would say would challenge the right. Christian perspective. Yes. So then how do we address that question? If you're coming from a Christian perspective, how do you right. look right. at 
chemical evolution and macro evolution. Right. Well, I mean, you know, theological concerns are important, mm -hmm. you know, but we also want to make sure that our theological concerns are grounded in the science. Mm -hmm. And scientifically speaking, no one knows how chemical evolution could have generated the first cells. Mm -hmm. And um, when it comes to uh, macro evolution, uh, the, the evidence for macro evolution is, is largely inferential. It's not mm -hmm. direct evidence. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, scientists working on macroevolutionary problems struggle to explain how evolutionary mechanisms can generate biological novelty. So mm -hmm. to be skeptical about those two aspects of evolution uh, is scientifically legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's not uh, outside the scientific mainstream because scientists who ascribe to the evolutionary paradigm struggle to account for those kinds of uh, transitions in life's history. So that would be something like um, the last universal common ancestor, like trying to find that? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, and, and, and not having that yet, right? Yes, yes. Or uh, part of the problem too would be, you know, when organisms evolve from one major group to the other, mm -hmm. you're, you're creating new biological systems. And the challenge is how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the genetic networks that have to emerge and then have to be expressed over time through the developmental process are extremely intricate and extremely uh, integrated with one another. Mm -hmm. And that poses very real problems in terms of how do you account for uh, biological novelty. So when you talk about um, your perspective as an old earth creationist, how do you differentiate an old earth creationist perspective from a theistic evolutionist perspective? Yeah, well, a theistic evolutionist would, would embrace the evolutionary paradigm in its totality, mm -hmm. and again, see evolution as a means by which God creates. As an old earth creationist, I would be skeptical of aspects of the evolutionary paradigm, mm -hmm. but I, I, and so I wouldn't accept it in its entirety, right. uh, but I would accept aspects or parts of it. Right. So there is then a distinction, though, because I think sometimes there's mm -hmm. confusion, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Both theistic evolutionists and old earth creationists would accept the antiquity of the earth mm -hmm. and the antiquity of life on earth. Mm -hmm. They both would see a history of life on earth that spans you know, hundreds of millions of years, well, actually billions of years, mm -hmm. if you think about my, you know, the very first appearance of microorganisms mm -hmm. on the earth. So they both would acknowledge that those pieces of evidence, mm -hmm. they both would see the fossil record as being a proxy for the history of life on Earth, as opposed to being the product of a of a, a global flood event. Right. Right. Well, thank you for that. I think that definitely helps to explain the different types of evolution and to explain the distinction between an old Earth perspective and theistic evolution. Um, so when you're talking about evolution or that topic comes up, how do you use that to have a conversation about your faith or to show, um, to affirm your faith? Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes to the, the question of evolution, you really are ultimately dealing with the question of origins. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, you know, people are interested in where do we come from as mm -hmm. human beings? And, and so I think discussing evolution is really fertile ground for, for those kinds of conversations that lead to the deeper questions as to who we are as human beings. But there's a lot of people I meet who simply say, if evolution can explain everything in biology, then a creator is not necessary. Why do I need to believe in a creator? Right. And if you can show people that evolution might be part of the story, but it's not the total story, and that it really does look like you need a creator to explain at least some aspects of life's history, mm -hmm. that then opens up people to the possibility that if there's a creator, then how do I relate to that creator? Right. Well, you talked about just like um, there's more to the story and there's yeah. definitely more to this conversation. So we yeah. can't talk about everything here. Um, is there a certain resource that you would want us to point people to? I think you have an article on, yeah. what is it, caffeine eating bacteria? Yeah. So yeah. there's an article I wrote a few years ago mm -hmm. about uh, the evolution of caffeine eating bacteria. And there I describe the different types of evolution and again, give people hopefully a helpful framework to think about evolution as a Christian. Well, thank you for that, Buzz. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear more on this topic, go to reasons.org and search for caffeine eating bacteria.